So I had lots of people on the way into church this morning say, isn't it great that it's a whole lot cooler? Thank God for the change, that kind of thing. And believe me, yesterday I was sweltering along with the rest of you. But uh, as I explained last week, I've been in Canada for two weeks and I was in Halifax. And what, the day that I decided to go downtown, it was minus 11 and a half degrees. It's the coldest day I've ever been in my life. And if I had to choose between yesterday and minus 11 and a half, I'd choose yesterday every day of the week. It's really nice to be back. I'm conscious that I've been away both bet between being in Canada for a couple of weeks and then also uh, as we're settling into St. Joseph's. So it's been a little while, um, but it's really nice to be here, home uh, at St. Declan's. Not sure if you noticed, uh, but the first reading and the gospel today are really strongly connected. That's always the case. The first reading and the gospel every Sunday are chosen for their thematic unity, for the link between the two of them. Sometimes, I've got to confess as a preacher, you've got to go really looking for that link. You're kind of going, you're comparing on. I don't know what they were thinking, and you work hard to find it. Today, there is no possibility of that because we have the prophet Isaiah in the first reading saying, prepare a way for the Lord, make straight his paths. And then you have in Mark's gospel, in the reading we've just heard, you have Mark quoting that passage from the prophet Isaiah. So the link is really clear. What does it mean? Well, it's this, that in the time of the prophet Isaiah, he was um, calling upon or asking the people of Israel to ready themselves for a fresh presence or a fresh coming of God amongst them. And that, as that never seemed to be fully fulfilled, that took on the character of a prophecy that Mark, when he comes to write his gospel, says, well, that passage in the prophet Isaiah that was written some 400 years ago, that's being fulfilled now in the person of John the Baptist. That John is the one who is to prepare a way for the Lord, to make straight the paths so that people can easily come to him. The idea is that the people of Israel have always struggled to be faithful to the relationship that God has called them to have. And now the prophet Isaiah has asked them to ready themselves that in the desert, They'll come away, uh, they'll come one who will prepare the way for the coming of God. And of course, that's exactly what John the Baptist does. John goes out into the desert and to the, but to the Jordan River, the only, only uh, river in the Holy Land that actually forms the boundary into the Holy Land. And what John understands his mission to be is, first of all, he really is the one who invents baptism. There are some precursors to it, but it's really John who invents baptism. And the idea is that John's saying, Israel, you've walked away from God. You've been unfaithful to God. You haven't lived up to what God's called you to do. But if you repent and you undergo this baptism, you are washed in the river, you'll be clean, not just physically, but spiritually, and you'll be ready to enter into the promised land, the chosen land of the chosen people once more. You'll be ready for God when he comes to be with you. That's how John understood his mission. He knew that his job was to prepare the way, that he wasn't the end. His job was really to be the one who pointed and said that, and he says that in the passage you just heard, I'm not the one you're looking for. The baptism I'm giving is just for the repentance of sins. But what you will receive from the next guy, the one who comes after that, will be that the Holy Spirit, you'll be baptized. The word baptized means immersed. You'll be immersed in the Holy Spirit, which is to say that you'll be immersed in the very love that is God. The reason for us, as we hear that, we think, oh, well, we're used to the idea of baptism. We understand that the Holy Spirit's been given to us at our baptism and our confirmation. But what we need to understand is that in the time of John the Baptist, the Holy Spirit did not come and fall upon people in that way. There were, people, there were individuals in the Old Testament, usually kings and prophets, who were given the Spirit for the mission that they had to fulfill, to be the king, to be the prophet. But that had seemingly dried up. 
for several hundred years before this time, there's nobody that Israel understands that has received the Spirit in the way that the kings and prophets of old had received. And the other big difference here is that John the Baptist is saying that you receive the Holy Spirit, not you who are a select few, not you who are prophets, not you who are kings, but everyone. All shall receive the presence of God. All shall know that they're loved by God, personally and individually. It's a big shift. And of course, the one who's to come after John, the one that he's been preparing the way for, is Jesus. That's the one that he's been waiting for. That's the one that the people of Israel have been waiting for. It's actually the one that the human race, although the human race didn't know it, was waiting for too. The one who would bring in this time where God would truly dwell among his people, where God would dwell in us and with us, that he would fill us with his love. So what you have is a prophecy and its fulfilment. It doesn't stop there, though. That our task, our mission today, is to also prepare a way for the Lord. That's actually part of the mission of our parish, that what we want to do here at St. Declan's is to prepare a way for people to meet the Lord, to encounter him, and to discover the love that Jesus has for them. And so we've set up, if you think about the, the way the gospel talks today, it says prepare a way for the Lord. Well, we've tried to create a way, a pathway, if you like, that actually helps people to do this. And so that's our diagram. I, I was thinking about how it says in the gospel today, make his path straight. And I was thinking, we weren't thinking about this passage when we came up with this image. But I want to just quickly remind you, many of you will have seen it, some of you won't. But where it starts is the two people in, in the orange box and it starts with an invitation that you're invited when you come here to St. Eklund's, you're invited to go on a journey, a journey of discovering what faith looks like and what it means to be a follower of Jesus. And what we want for you is to be able to invite others to share in that journey as well. The best thing that we think you can be invited to at that stage is to Alpha. Why is that? Alpha's a simple series that introduces people to who Jesus is. It's really great for people who have not known much about God, who haven't heard much about Jesus. It's a wonderful way to be introduced to the Catholic faith. When we come here at Mass on Sunday, there's so much to it that if you're actually really brand spanking new to it all, it's bewildering. This Alpha's a wonderful introduction to faith. And if somebody's a person who actually was a Catholic or is a Catholic but hasn't been to church for a long time, Alpha can be great too, especially if they've got some wounds from the past or they're hurt by things that have happened or they just found Mass boring and didn't understand it. Alpha's a great way to take a fresh look at faith. And so that's why, we, that's why it's such an important part of what we do here at St. Declan's. We want you to keep walking along the pathway, though, as well. And so the next step that you have there, which is the one at the top in the brown, um, that's actually our life groups. And that's because we believe that you can't be a Christian by yourself, that it's so important that we are in community. We absolutely come into a new relationship with God when we meet Jesus, but we also come into a new relationship with each other. And so to have the chance to connect with others, it's a great way to grow in faith to be supported and encouraged. There's some 200 people who are in life groups in our parish at this time would, say, would point to the fact that it helps them to stay focused, to be reminded of the importance of faith, to be encouraged in their journey. That's why we think that's so important as well. Then it comes down into the middle, which is, um, stands for worship and especially the Eucharist. I'm going to come back to that one. We're going to keep sliding through. You'll see in the next one, which is the cross with the arrows going out, that means that we're called to ministry, to ministry, to serve in the parish. One of the best ways you can grow in your faith to prepare the way for God in your life is by serving others. And so we encourage and invite people to serve in according with their gifts and with their capacity. The two hands signifies outreach. And we define outreach as reaching out to those people who are poor 
or suffering or hurting in some way. And we've taken some great steps forward this year in offering opportunities to serve in that way. We've uh, employed Joanna as the outreach coordinator to help facilitate outreach opportunities. And there'll be more to say about that in the new year as well. Then the top yellow one, which is the hand around the jar, signifies formation. That we need to grow and learn more about our faith. That Alpha, excuse me, what we learn at Alpha and Life Groups isn't enough. We've got to keep learning more about what we believe. And it culminates then in the centre with Eucharist. That the best way, the most important way, the indispensable way to be nourished and nurtured in our faith is to encounter Jesus in the Mass and in our prayer. There are all sorts of ways to encounter Jesus in our lives. He shows up all over the place and often in unexpected places. But his promise to us is that he is here present in the Eucharist in a unique way. That he's with us here in a way that he's not with us in any other way because it's his very body and blood that become present here. That what looks like bread and wine actually becomes Jesus. And we receive him so that we might be transformed more deeply into him. When somebody's gone on this path, this journey, they understand the importance, the significance of Mass each Sunday. That it's right at the very centre and heart of our faith. That it's not for the parish's benefit, as it were, but it's for our benefit, that we need Jesus. And I promise you this, it's a whole lot easier to see Jesus in the rest of our lives when we've encountered him here in Mass on Sunday. It becomes easier to work out where else he's showing up in our life when we've received him in Eucharist. So that's our pathway. Like I said, it's not a straight path. That actually is deliberate, and that's because it doesn't end. It's an infinity symbol, and that's because we're all on the journey. So I'd want to say to you, if you are looking and listening to this and you're thinking, well, I'm not sure how I fit in this or whether I belong or not, I want to firstly say we'd just love you to come on the journey with us. But I also want you to know that we're all on the journey. Nobody ever fully arrives here. But when we go on this pathway, this journey of deepening in faith, we find that what, what's going on is that, that, as it were, we're preparing the way, like John the Baptist, for Jesus to reign more fully, to come more fully into our lives, into our hearts, and so to shape our actions in our lives. The final thing that we'd want to say there is that the, the readings today invite us to think about how we might be a John the Baptist for others, how we might invite others to go on this journey too. We've tried to make that really simple. You don't have to feel like you've got a degree in theology or you understand everything about what it is to be a Catholic or you know how to respond to every question that somebody might have. What we'd like you to be able to feel comfortable to do is to say to somebody who is searching or feels like there's got to be something more who's restless, who's thinking, I need some more of God in my life, but I don't know where to start, to be able to say to those people, look, I might not be able to tell you everything, but I know that if you check out St. Declan's, and in particular, if you check out Alpha, there's a context there where you can explore those questions and where you can discover more about what faith really means. So we don't, we don't ask you to have that all sorted out. We just ask you to have the confidence to be able to say, can I invite somebody to participate in Alpha with us? As we celebrate this Mass then, and as we look forward to Easter, can I just invite you to think about how you might jump on the pathway, if you like, wherever you understand yourself to be, however you feel like that fits. If you're new here, if it's the first time back in a long time, um, it's totally okay to feel like, well, I've been on the path in the past, but maybe I've stepped off it for a little while. To jump back on is no problem at all. We want you to know that there's always a place for you here and that there's always a place to embark upon that journey either again or also for the first time.